video is for the Chapter 2 Space Needle Programming Exercise, and this is taken from Chapter 2 of the Publisher's Slides, starting on slide number 55 here. So this image here is an ASCII art image similar to the Space Needle that I want you to do. It's obviously a lot simpler, but we're going to work through this, this example so you can see how to figure out how to do these kind of things and I think the Space Needle should be pretty straightforward after that. So um, first we're going to do is we're going to um, think about how to break up this problem and then we're going to create a table to figure out how many spaces and how many uh, dots we need for each of these uh, sections here and then we can just translate that to a for loop. So first let's talk about an algorithm. This is a different um, picture but you can imagine breaking this problem down into several problems. You've got this row of 12 stars here. You've got this group of five lines with the stars, spaces, and stars. And then you've got that same 12 stars there. And you should already be thinking, hey, I can create a static method that will do this and this. Um, and uh, I can create a for loop to draw these five here. So uh, we, uh, we're going to create a pseudocode algorithm, and this is something that people do all the time. Not necessarily at this level, but professional programmers whiteboard their problems all the time. It's very, very common. Get used to doing it. So the, the first step, um, going back to the original problem, is we're going to draw this line here, which will be a pound, and then 16 of these equals another pound. Then we can imagine a problem being brought, uh, broken down into a top half and a bottom half. The top half consists of this uh, pipe character, a bunch of spaces, you've got the less than greater than, you've got some number of dots, which is optionally, could be zero, and then you've got the less than greater than spaces and a pipe. Then you can do the bottom half, reverse, and then finally this last one is the exact same as that one. So now we're going to start doing methods, and this is exactly how I want you to do the space needle. After you've taken a look at the Space Needle and you've kind of figured out how you're going to draw an algorithm, go ahead and go into Eclipse and create a, a blank um, class uh, with the main and then go ahead and start putting in the main for little sub-figures. So, so in this case, we're going to do the line, the top half, the bottom half, the line. And then just go ahead and write blank headers for the top half, bottom half, the line, and then get that to compile. Make sure that it runs. And make sure you don't have any syntax errors. Then start doing the top half here. So you've got a for loop here from um, line one to four, bottom half line one to four. I would actually prefer to do the top half entirely and then do the bottom half later. But you can, you can see either way. Okay, we're going to do some further refinement now. We're going to actually build the table here. So if I was doing this in my editor, I would actually put this in the in the text editor, and I would click here, and then I would I would see how many spaces are we going to be over here. I'm going to actually back up a second. Um, how many spaces are here, and then how many characters here, how many dots here, and then I fill out this this table. So this is line one, line two, line three, line four. On line one, there are there's a pipe character. There's six spaces. Line two, it's four spaces. Line three, two spaces, it's zero. So now, and the dots, it's going to be zero, four, eight, twelve. Now we need to figure out a formula that can express this in terms of line. So we see six, four, two, oh. So obviously we've got line times two, except we're doing it upside down, right? So we actually have to subtract the six, four, two, oh from some number. So if we had line times two, we know we've got that in here. And then so line, let's let's say if it's what about six, six minus line times two, that would be six minus two is four. So that's not going to work. We maybe if we did eight, and if we go ahead and fill that table in, so this line times minus two, so we take eight minus line minus two, it, it works out to be exactly perfect. Okay, we're starting out two too many, and then we're subtracting line times two each time. Similarly to the dots, the dots are even easier since they're starting out with zero. We just have to subtract um, one. This is 
they've, they've expanded this here. Well, right, the way I would think of this is line minus one. So this is zero, one, two, three, okay? And then you just have to multiply that by four. So that's our table that we've figured out how to create the for loop. Now all you gotta do is take these two expressions and put them into for loops. Okay. So what we're gonna do here, the top half, we're gonna print out the pipe character. Now the spaces, remember this is the expression, it's eight minus line times two. So um, in for loops, there's basically two ways to do for loops uh, counting up. So either start with one and then it's less than equal or it's zero and it's less than. And you only really want to do zero less than if you're doing an array indexed by the first index is zero or something. So generally, we're going to be doing it one and less than or equal to. So we're going to print out that number of spaces. We're going to print out the less than equal. Now for the dots, again, I would actually write this line minus one times four just because it's clear how you figured it out. And then um, here, it's the same thing. Their comment here is print the expanding pattern, blah, blah. I would actually put the comment that tells me exactly what the table is that we just did. I think that's much more helpful than doing this. Okay. Now we're going to talk about class constants and scope. So this is the image that we just did, but um, the book has this concept of, well, you can print this image in any size. So this is size four, meaning there's one, two, three, four lines. This one is size three, meaning there's one, two, three lines. So how can we make our code so that we can adjust it to size two, three, four, any size we want? So um, ideally, we could have a variable that is passed in as one of these uh, command line arguments, but we haven't learned that yet. Um, so instead, what you might try doing is just putting a variable here and then trying to use it here. But because of scoping rules, which means where a variable is visible. Variables are only visible between the brackets that surround them. So this is not going to work. You can't do that here and there. So this is just saying exactly what I said. It's only available in the brackets. This is X is scope. I is scope. Now here they're talking about um, mistakes that can be made because of variable names. The uh, prototype variables for loop variables are i, j, k, or x, y, z, or something like that. And for simple examples, that's fine. Whenever you get something complex, I don't want you to see, want to see you using i, j, k, x, y, z. I want you to see using variable names that actually make sense. So instead of i, take a few extra characters and say slashes. Instead of i here, say backslashes. There will be no question as to what the variable is. Um, they're, they're, they're adding more confusion by declaring yet another int i out here, which is okay, but it's, again, very confusing. So this is the problem with using these simple variable names. Um, here they're pointing out that you can't have an int i inside the same loop that you're using int i in, and you can't use, access it outside its scope. Okay, so class constants. Um, in C, these are basically pound define. Pound define is actually uh, something that's done before the document is compiled, and it always trips me up because in C, you don't use a type. A pound define is just it's just a substitution um, done by basically uh, you know a text processing. But in Java, it's actually treated as a type. So public, static, final. We won't go into what all that means but it basically means that it's available everywhere and it's not going to change. And then you have to give it the type, so it could, it's going to be an int or a double or whatever. And then you declare it just like any other variable. By convention, it's all uppercase. And so these are some examples here. So remember that if you ever do this in C, that th there's not going to be an int or a double or whatever. C looks at the literal and then just substitutes it in. Okay, so we're talking about how to scale these figures. So here, there's one, two, three, four, five of these lines here. There's two here. There's two here. There's one, two, three, four, five repeated on, uh, with symmetry. So there's another five there. So that's how we scale a figure. So this is, a, the, this is the code that will work for that figure we just looked at. And you see in, in bold here, they've put the exact numbers. 
But the point is, rather than using those exact numbers, if you want to be able to scale it, let's use the static final int. So here we have the static final int. So instead of 10, we have 5, that height times 2. And we've replaced 5 here, and we've replaced 5 here. So now we can change that height from 5 to be 2, and we can um, run the program again. Okay, so now we're going back to the mirror code. <laughs> they, they switch back and forth between a lot of different figures here. But I think you remember, this was the, the mirror, and the one I told you was kind of like the Space Needle. In fact, this looks very much like the Space Needle's uh, the, the saucer shape here, in size 4 and 3. So here, um, this is not the complete code, obviously, but they're just showing. Let's add a public static final int for the size, and now let's, instead of using four, let's just put size in, and obviously our code's not done. And now let's go back to this table here. So again, we have to figure out for size four and for size three, how many spaces are in here. Um, so there's six, four, two, and zero. And for size three, it's four, two, and zero. So in both cases, there's a factor of two times the line. In both cases, it's inverted, right? Um, you may remember that before, it, the formula was eight minus two times the line. Here, it looks like it would be six minus two times the line. So I noticed that eight is two times four and six is two times three. So sure enough, that's the formula here. It's yeah, well, they haven't put in size, but this is this is two times the size. I think if we take one more step, there we go. So it's two times the size minus two times the line. So that's what we need to put in our for loops. I think we're finally getting somewhere here. Okay, so now we've got public static final int up here for the size. We get size and the number of lines here. Now we're using the this expression is relative to size. And here, it's, it's a little bit funny, but these dots are independent of size. And here, we've got the size here as well. This is just pointing out what I was saying. Is that it's a little bit funny that there's no, um, there's no uh, a reference to size here. And again, we talked about precedence this week. And you see this 4 minus 4, and you might just think, oh, well, I, I can just get rid of that. But because of precedence, this happens first. I would personally put parens around this just so that nobody makes a mistake later. What happens if this expression gets a little bit more complicated? Someone goes in and edits it and doesn't realize that this happens before that. So I would always do that. So that is the basics of how you're going to do the Space Needle. You're going to figure out how uh, it's actually extra credit to do it scaled. But what you're going to do, I'm going to go back here is you're going to figure out what is the expression for each of the for loops. This looks, again, a lot like a space needle. You've got some number of spaces. You've got some border characters. You've got some internal characters. If you just follow the same example, you'll be able to do it. And um, shouldn't take you too long, but it, it is challenging. I'll give you that. It's, it is challenging, so don't be a little bit don't be surprised. That's why I made the uh, being able to size it a little bit of extra credit. So hopefully you'll uh, you'll enjoy this, and I and suggest you play around with it and take pride in how many space needles you can make.